Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, rearrange array elements by sign. We're given an array where the length of it is always gonna be even and that's because half of the elements are always gonna be positive, meaning greater than zero, and half of them are gonna be negative numbers, meaning less than zero. We have to rearrange nums such that we satisfy these conditions. Every pair of numbers, so let's say given this array, Every pair of numbers is gonna be positive and negative, starting with a positive element. So that actually satisfies the first condition and the second condition and the third condition. The second condition here is probably the trickiest one. The relative order of elements in the original array should be preserved. That means, basically, let's make this second pair here as well. We actually didn't change the input array here but I guess you could assume that maybe it actually looked like this, one, negative two, negative four, and three. For us to say we preserve the relative order, positive one has to show up before positive three. And that looks like it does in our case. Same thing with all the negative numbers. Negative two has to show up before negative four. Of course, it won't necessarily show up before the positive numbers because we do have to rearrange it, but that's not a problem. And this is kind of similar to the concept of a stable sorting algorithm, except we are kind of separating this into positives and negatives. We only want the positives to be stable and the negatives to be stable, but not together. I go over this, I think, in the sorting section of the DSA for Beginners course. Some algorithms, I think like merge sort, are stable, whereas other algorithms like quicksort are not stable. And the definition of stable is different when it comes to sorting. Uh, continuing with this problem, the simplest way probably to solve this problem is allocate two arrays, one for positive numbers and one for negative numbers. What we do is basically go through the input array. Every time we encounter a positive number, we add it to the positive array. Every time we get a negative number, add it to the negative array. So here is negative four, and here is positive three. So we're just separating these into two distinct arrays. And then when we want to build the output array, it becomes pretty trivial. It's kind of like merge sort, except it's even more simple because we don't really need to compare the elements. We know for sure both of these are gonna be of the exact same length. So in a way, we can actually just have a single pointer, let's call that I, and we'll grab the first positive number, we'll grab the first negative number, put them here, and then we'll do the same thing. Shift our I pointer over here, grab the positive and grab the negative and put them over here. And we could maintain another pointer when we're filling this output array in, but we actually don't even need to. We actually, if you wanna be clever, instead of having like another pointer, let's call it J, and incrementing that by two every time, we could just have a pointer I and do some basic arithmetic. Two times I is gonna tell us the first position, two times I plus one is gonna tell us the second position. The plus one is simple, it just comes from the first one. And of course these should be adjacent. So that's where the plus one comes from because we want the negative number to come right after the positive number. And it works out in the first case just because arrays are zero indexed. But more importantly, it works out in the other cases because the reason we have two times i is because we want to increment i by two every single time. But down here, we're not doing that. We're only incrementing it by one because we wanna get the numbers at every index from these arrays. The way we coded this up, it's obvious that this is gonna be stable because the positive numbers maintain their order, so do the negative numbers. We do need extra memory here. That's a big O of n time, n space solution, but we can't really do any better than that. So this is what I'm gonna code up for you. So I'm gonna have a couple arrays, positive and negative. Each of them is gonna be empty initially. Then just to separate the elements, let's go through every number here. And since we know it, they're never gonna be equal to zero, we can just check, is this greater than or equal to zero? Otherwise, we can assume it's negative. If it's greater, well, I think I said greater than or equal, but it should just be strictly greater. So if it's greater, let's say positive dot append n. Otherwise, let's append it to the negative. After we're done with that, we can have our pointer solution. Again, if you wanna have a second pointer, to make it easier for you, that's perfectly fine. But I, I feel like if I do that, at least one person is gonna comment saying, well, there's actually a way you don't need two pointers. So that's why I'm showing you the slightly more complicated way to do this. And so if we're gonna do it that way, we just wanna make sure that two times i is less 
than this because two times i will kind of tell us the current position that we're at in the nums array and we're not going to allocate extra memory for the output we're just going to do that in place here this is not like a full in place solution because obviously we do have extra memory here but when it comes to what we return we're returning the same array as the input now here we check two times i is that going to be assigned to positive. And the next one, two times i plus one is going to be the negative number at index i. Don't forget to increment our i index and how much are we going to do it by? We can't increment it by two because then this is going to be out of bounds. So we increment it by one. And then that's why we have the two times here. So even though we're incrementing this by one, when it comes to this array, we are actually incrementing it by two. That's why we have two times everywhere. But these arrays we stay in bounds with just i. So let's run this. Okay, I didn't have the i over here. Let's run that one more time. Sorry, I don't know how I missed that. I guess we should take our time. But you can see overall the problem works. It's pretty efficient. It's about as efficient as you can get, but there is a slightly different solution that I want to show you. And it's similar to the partition portion of the quicksort algorithm. Now I want to show you a slightly different method that is kind of like the partition algorithm in quicksort. First, I want to show you why it doesn't work if we try to do this in place. We're going to do it kind of similar to the previous solution. We're going to have two pointers. I is always going to tell us where the positive integers are going to go. So it's going to be here, here, and here. J is always going to tell us where the negative integers are going to go. So when we start, we look at three and we see it's positive so we're going to put it here we're using like the same memory i'm just drawing it down here so that we have extra space so three is going to stay where it is now our i pointer is going to be here our j pointer is still there next we get to positive one it's going to go over here in that position but we don't want to lose the element that's already there so we swap it with the current position so now we're going to have negative two one over here. So far, so good. So far, it's pretty stable as well. Now we get here and the value there is now going to be positive one. So this positive one now is going to go over here because we've already filled in the positive number that goes here, here, and now we want to get the next one. So now this one's going to go here and we're going to swap it with the two over here. It's not stable anymore. The relative order of these obviously changed. And if we continue going, now we get to this element, negative four, negative five, and it is technically the first negative element that we encountered. So we're going to put it over here. We never actually read this value. We had swapped it over here before we read it. So it's not really going to work. After we performed that swap, we could have actually kept our pointer there. It still would have led to the unstableness of this. So the main reason that we can't do this in place is because we need it to be stable. But generally speaking, quicksort is not stable. So the way we do this is by allocating extra memory. So let's try to quickly run through it with extra memory. So starting here, this is where our pointers are. This is where we're at. Positive three, it's going to go here. Next, we get to this value, positive one. It's going to go over here. Negative two is going to go over here. So it's kind of like that merge portion from the first solution that I showed you. We're just kind of doing it with some extra memory. Negative five. So we filled that in. And now we're trying to fill these two in. Negative five is going to go here. Positive two is going to go here. Next J value to fill in is this. And negative four goes there. So it was not only stable, the relative order is preserved, but also it did partition it by positive, negative, positive, negative. Every other one is alternating. So we just needed some extra space. So this is the time and space. So let's code this solution up as well. This time I am actually going to have two pointers just because I and J could be incremented independently. We might like the first three elements we see, they might all be positive. So for that reason, having multiple pointers is kind of necessary. So I'll have two I and J. And I'm going to declare the result up front, and I'm also going to fill it in with all zeros so that the length of it is similar or the exact same as the length of the input. That is pretty important. So now when we check, I'm going to have a third pointer, actually, which tells us the index that we're at in the result or the input array. So while K is less than the length of nums, and actually, now that I think of it, we could probably just do for k in range length of nums because it should be incremented by one each time. So now let's just check, is the number positive or is it negative? I'll just check if it's greater than zero. Otherwise, it's this. And if it is, let's set the value in the result. So for positives, we're going to use the i pointer. It's going to be set to nums of k. 
And for the other case, it's gonna be set to the J pointer. That's where the negatives go. Each time, we probably want to increment that pointer by two. So I is gonna be incremented by two. In that case, other case, J is gonna be incremented by two. Regardless, K should be incremented by one each time though. So this is the entire code. We just needed some extra memory. Let's run it. And as you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.